Hello, I'm Jim Levis from M&G Investments. I'm here today uh, with Martin Ford, the author of The Rise of the Robots, which was my favourite investment book of last year. It was also the FT's Business Book of the Year 2015. Hi, Martin. Hi, good to be here. Now, normally when we talk about technology, we talk about the positives that it brings in terms of growth and the ability to enhance productivity. In fact, we haven't seen productivity rise in the last few years, despite the internet and all, all the great developments we've seen. And your book's actually quite pessimistic about some of the things that robotics and AI might bring to mankind. What's your book about? Well, the, the book really presents some challenges that I think we need to think through. Uh, the reality is that technology is getting to the point where it's going to have a very significant impact on the job market. It's, you know, machines are increasingly going to be capable of taking over a lot of the work that's now being done by people, uh, probably on an unprecedented scale. I mean, this is, people will, who are skeptical will point out that this is something that has happened throughout history, and that's certainly true. But we're really now beginning machines we're getting machines that can, on, in some limited sense at least, begin to think like people. They can take on intellectual tasks as well as manual tasks. And that's something that you know, is a capability that's just going to scale across industries. It's going to invade really every kind of work. And it's going to climb the skills ladder and take over a lot of jobs that are now done by people who are educated and so forth. So it's, it's I think, a big challenge for us. So when we think about robots, we probably think about car factories and the replacement of blue-collar jobs, but this goes beyond that. That's right. I mean, I used the term robots in the title because it's a very evocative term, yeah. um, obviously, but the reality is that, that probably more of this than not is not about actual robots at all. It's just software. Um, you know, if you're sitting in front of a computer doing something relatively routine and repetitive, it's very easy to automate that using just software. You don't need an expensive robot. So, you know, this is something that really scales across all kinds of occupations and jobs. It's not just about mechanical robots. But we're still seeing profits grow. So is this, is this a problem of output or is it a problem of um, what's going to happen to wages? And um, in the future, will we see governments try to do something to get people back in the workforce or is it, is it a lost cause? Can people skill up to get to the same levels of computers and robots or is it an impossible task? Well, in, you know, in the short term we are going to see profits increase because obviously this technology makes companies more efficient. In the long run what I worry about is that if we really end up with unemployment or we end up with people that have very low wages then we don't have enough people out there to drive the economy and create demand and create a a prosperous future. And I think at that point, if we begin to see that, then I hope that, that governments and, and the population in general will wake up to the fact that we need to do something to adapt to this. Have, we need to have some sort of, I think, probably unprecedented economic policies that can help us deal with this, this fundamental shift that's occurring. And you talked about this working from both ends as well. So not only are people going to lose their jobs and have lower incomes, but the impact is that robots have no incomes at all. And uh, at the same time as people are poorer generally um, as a result of this or have no job, there's no one to buy the stuff that the robots are making. That's right. I mean, basically the whole economy ultimately is driven by people buying things. I mean, that's where demand comes from. Um, and in our current system, that is dependent on, on jobs. I mean, jobs are a mechanism that gets purchasing power, if you will, into the hands of the people that buy the things the economy produces. So if that mechanism begins to erode, becomes less effective, if lots of people are jobless or if the wages paid are very low, then you can easily see how that's potentially a big problem. We're going to get into a perhaps a deflationary scenario where there just isn't enough demand out there to really drive the economy um, and where we risk, you know, kind of falling into a downward spiral. So that, that's a real risk. So on some form, you could look at this world that's coming and say this is kind of the ideal leisure society where people don't have to work anymore, that standards of living could rise because we have, you know, great technologies and cheaper transportation, Uber and things like that. And it's a very positive message. Uh, you're saying it's not necessarily going to be the outcome unless governments do something dramatic. And what can they do in terms of uh, a policy to to solve this problem. You're right. I mean, I definitely think that that optimistic outcome is possible and it's something we should strive for, but I just don't believe it's going to happen automatically. We need to have some policies in place. 
I think that any policy you can envision to adapt to this problem is going to be fairly radical. And I think maybe the best idea that I've heard about is, is to give everyone a guaranteed basic income so that everyone in our society, regardless of whether you've got a traditional job or not, or whether you can work enough hours to generate sufficient income, or whether your wage is high enough, you'll have at least a decent, minimal, livable income. And that will allow you not just to survive economically, but it will also allow you to go out and act as a consumer and help drive demand that, that you know, really sustains capitalism. And I think that that's the direction we're ultimately going to have to move in. It's not something that I anticipate happening soon. It's obviously a tremendous political challenge to, to, to get there. But in, in some sense, I do think it's almost inevitable that that's um, the kind of solution we're going to have to come up with. Martin Ford, thank you very much. Thanks so much. <laughs>